I'm on an electric boat and uh, John is in front of me and we're going to discuss the difference between electric and diesel because there is a difference and I think you know there's a lot of lot of interest out there in electricity well, I've got an interest in electricity um, but I chose not to have electricity because I thought it would be too problematic but John's going to discuss what he thinks um, clearly he's got one he doesn't think it's problematic and um, might disperse a few thoughts, ideas, rumours, whatever it is. And maybe I've created some of them because it's just a YouTuber's point of view. And um, John's here to discuss his bit. So thank you very much, John. One for the tea and one for uh, agreeing to, to put yourself on camera. You're welcome. You're welcome. So yeah, I mean, I, it, Chris says we've gone electric. It was, it was not... It was not a decision we made consciously at the beginning. We started looking for boats about 2021. We visited some boat yards, six of them, I think. Um, and we chose a builder uh, and we started planning things. And then we got to the hull stage and the fit out electrical stuff. And he said, I'm struggling post COVID, post Ukraine supply chain issues. I can't get a hybrid beat the marine engine um, for about another year and a half, which would have mean our plans would have gone out another year. And that was your preferred choice? It was going to be a beta hybrid. Right. So an inline hybrid, so a traditional diesel engine, I like mechanics, just a diesel engine, a motor behind it. Yep. So you could do a bit like a hybrid car, like your Prius, you could do sort stuff with the motor, then the generator and the engine would come and do the rest of it. And I quite fancy that. Um, beta marine supply chain problems with the Kubota engines. Yep. I quite like the beta ones. And the boat builder said, look, we've had a chat with, with the guys and beta are doing a electric drive. They fitted on a couple of boats. Um, there's a boat called Electra, which has been on YouTube. He's got his own channel. Um, he he sells around. He's got an Electra one. So we thought, let's give it a go. Um, it cost a little bit more money, um, and I'm, I'm generally happy with it. So we've only been on the boat six weeks. We picked it up early end of end of January. It's got a 14 kilowatt electric motor. Um, which drives, just drives the prop. Um, and it's got a generator, a little 1100cc three cylinder beta generator, which is actually running at the moment. It's in an acoustic enclosure um, to charge the batteries. And so far we've, we've done sort of four or five hour cruises. It's been fine. It's gone down 20%, 25%. And then when we get close to 50, the generator starts up and it charges up again. So you don't have to start the Jenny, it automatically kicks in? Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a load of Vitron gubbins which monitors it all and there's different parameters to set to start the generator to start. It can go on battery voltage, current, draw and things like that. So we originally, when we first moved in, we were in a marina for three weeks, we had shoreline, um, so we didn't use the generator much, but it was set on quite a low current. So when we put the, the grill on, because the electric cooking, the generator started because it was set on 800 watts. But now we played around with it and now I've set it to three kilowatts. So if I'm doing everything, as soon as it hits three kilowatts, the generator will come on. And that's really to protect the batteries. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to be drawing too much current batteries. So I said the generator running at the moment because we got down to 65% yesterday or this morning. Um, and it'll run for about four hours probably. And then we'll be on 100%. Um, so, all right, then let, let's discuss um, everything that's electric on the boat, so you've got electric cooking, electric toaster, electric this, ele everything. Yeah. Okay, got it. So, batteries, you've got lead acid. Yeah, we have gone for traction cells, so 48 volts um, lead acid traction batteries. Um, they're German ones. They are, there's about a tonne of it at the back of the boat, um, under the back steps and the cupboards, and they're guaranteed for five years, they should last seven, seven to ten. So or longer. Or longer. Um, so, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a guaranteed bit, yeah. isn't it? So, we looked at lithium, and I had a chat with the boat builder and the guy doing the electrics, and he said, look, you're getting a similar guarantee with the, the, the batteries you've got. But they will cost a lot more. Um, and they're not really, this, this setup's designed for, for lead acid, traction batteries, that's how the generator works, how it, and it monitors it all. So, we thought, you know, that, 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 that seemed okay for us. We've got an 800 amp hour, so we're going for a higher capacity. You could, a standard setup is 600 amp per hour, we've got 800 amp per hour. Um, but again, you can only use 50%. Yeah. But we've sat here for three days, we cruised here on, it's now 
what day is it? It's now Tuesday. We cruised here on Friday. Friday. The generator ran for a couple of hours when we got here, and we've, it's running today. It'll run for four hours, and then we'll be okay. We'll be able to cruise tomorrow for three or four hours. That's very so, good, actually. And we haven't got a lot of sun. I mean, so we had no sun. No, we there, there's, didn't, there, no sun. No. It's just rained. <laughs> so, so we've got. I was quite keen on getting a load of sun, as much sun as I could on the roof. We got three 500 watt panels. Yeah. So that gets one and a half kilowatts. And even I think last week we got about 600 watts out of sun on a day last week when it was bright. And that's winter. They're flat on the roof. They're not raised. So in the summer, I'm quite hopeful that we'll we'll, we'll be fine. Um, it is. The thing with it going electric and going electric cooking was quite a, a biggie because we I was a bit nervous about it, but then it released gas, no gas bottles, no lugging gas around. We've got a diesel stove, so I quite like the boat looking tidy, I like the roof looking tidy. So our biggest expenditure is going to be diesel for the cooking, sorry, for the generator and for the stove. But I'm okay with that. And how much of diesel have you used? Can you, can you remember? We, we you, we've used, I filled up twice. And I've used about 70 and 60 litres. Okay. So 130, 140 odd litres. <coughs> and they're all, it's, it's non propulsion, it's all domestic rated, which is fine, so you don't you pay the, the lower price. Um, so I'm thinking it's now on the tanks on three quarters again. I, I reckon it's about 70, it's about 70 quid every couple of weeks. I think. I mean, we, we haven't done a huge amount of cruising yet. But I still think when we've had the, the Robasto on most mornings, we've had the diesel stove on in the evenings. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. You know, the things that I've been a bit anxious about, diesel usage, I'm quite happy with. So um, my, I've just fueled up with um, Jules Fuels yeah. um, now, and so did Colin. Now, Colin's only travelled from um, North Kilworth on his big engine thing, mm. uh, and he used 65 litres. I've come from rugby boats which is Whedon way, mm. um, done a lot more traveling and I use 55 liters. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, I think my engine comparatively is, is very um, economical. Mm. But, but there again, how often do I use the Robusto? Probably not as much as you. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, do you know what, 70 liters every couple of weeks? what you put in a car on it yeah. and we knew we knew we're going with electric and if we if we travel a lot in the winter and we've got the heating on we're going to use more yeah. in the summer we're going to stay put yeah 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 for two weeks where we can and if the solar's on i don't think we'd be using the generator but you know interestingly one of one of my bugbears about having a coal um stove um is coal mm. and i understand when people um want to be in an area where there's a fuel boat then you don't need to store coal no. because you use what you're going to use yeah. Yeah. and then some geezer comes by and drops another bag or two off for you. I just, we, you know, we, we, we did like, we've hired some boats over the years and we've done a lot of holidays and we had some with stoves on and it was quite nice. Yeah. And we did think that'd be nice, but I'm actually, I'm happy now we've gone with the diesel one because it is that, it's, it's the dust and the dirt and having to store coal. Um, I think it's the right choice for us. I, I get it, and, it, and it's you know, and, it, and it, we, we've got a hang of it. It's quite easy to light now. We don't yeah. leave it right. Some people say they leave them running for six months of the year. Yeah, we don't. We put on the evening for a few hours, and it warms the boat up. Um, we follow Chris's advice: keep the bathroom door shut and let the heat follow through. And, and <laughs> it, works, it works fine. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's my advice from Amanda. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm surprised the amount <clears> of people have said to me, "Oh." <clears throat> use that advice didn't know that there, there, there seems to be a, a lot of um a lot of unknown unknowns and everybody just everybody's boat and everybody lives on their boat differently yeah. Yeah. you would have thought wouldn't you we all live in a confined space and we all do pretty much the same stuff mm. no. how how you your symbiotic um live in with the boat because i think you both need to understand each other yeah. Yeah. And yes, this is an immovable object as such, but you kind of learn to live with it. Yeah. And we've, we've only been on it six weeks, <clears throat> as I say, and we've learned, we've settled in now, we're quite comfortable with how it, where everything is. Once we find homes for everything, um, we're getting used to it. I mean, it's quite, it was quite a big step to go from a house yeah. to the boat, get rid of the car, 
and now it's put a couple of electric push bikes and, and you know, they'll fit inside a locker where I because I've got gas. Bones so, so you know they can get their folding, yeah, folding up yeah, device, you know, so yeah. they they go in and they're locked away, so but, you know, I wish we want a bit of sun. But uh, yes, and of course your BSS will be so much easier because you've yeah. only got electric, you don't have to worry gas. about gas. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But say so we fell into it by you know just because of certain situation circumstances, um, and I was a bit worried. But I'm 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 comfortable now with that. I've you know water anxiety. I had a bit of that. So we've we've got a water freedom system being fitted. We used it a few times. That helps our little thing. The diesel. I'm comfortable with what we've used. A um, couple of little niggles with other bits and pieces on the boat, but the builders sort them out with us. So so generally, quite quite happy where we are. Yeah. Great and. and so I had a question there, um, admin, I've forgotten it. Uh, yeah, it'll come back to me perhaps. Um, can I ask, don't tell me the price of the boat, but how, if you wouldn't mind, what was the price of the electric drive system? It was about 35,000. Right. Which was the, the generator, the drive, and, of, and the batteries are an X rate. Okay. But I, th I think the, the Beta Marine engine, he says, was going to be about 15. So it probably cost us twice as much yeah. on the kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it is quite complicated. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, and, you know, we've, we've, we've watched other YouTube channels with people who've got electric boats, and some people had a bit of a problem. I quite, the Beta Marine setup looks quite good. Our boat builders now, most of his boats are now going to be done, go electric if you want electric. Do they? And, and they're using Beetham, the Beetham Marine system. Okay. Um, so far, I've, you know, I've serviced the generator because he needed an oil change of 50, 50 hours. So I've done that. Um, he's choking away in the background now. But for those people who, who don't know, it's not as eco, we're playing footsie there, um, <laughs> but it's not as eco as you not get ah. any diesel on the boat because you need a generator. Ah. Yeah. People are saying it's it's electric boat. <coughs> Send him over here, Ryan, I don't want to do it. Paisley, come here. Bless you. Come on, good boy. Yes. Um so where was I? With diesel. Yes. Um so it's not it's not electric, is it? Because it's it, it's got an electric motor which makes it go along, but you've got to get electricity from somewhere until um, and the CRT will never be putting electric pillars along the tow paths, it's not going to happen, is it? Um, so you need somewhere to generate electricity. So electric boats do require a form of generation which is diesel operated. But I suppose this our generator is a little 1100cc three cylinder thing. Mate, get it. Whereas a normal beta marine engine is at least two litres. So yeah, we're using less, we're using <coughs> less fuel. And once we get the summer and we get some sun, do I need any? You know, we're not we're not going to be. I can't see how it could work on a higher boat. I just can't see it because you know we're not going to be. You're cruising eight hours a day on a higher boat. Well, not only that. Look, look at the risk to the, the 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 boat the boat company. Yeah. I mean, if it's not your boat, you don't care about it. Do you? you want you want a simple, robust system yes. yeah. that's going to um, allow people to to abuse it yeah. without breaking. Uh, and it's the same with my boat, you know, even though it's a diesel engine um, and I've got solar panels and it's all pretty much um, household goods on the inside, mm. it uses power. Mm. I can't leave that boat for longer than three days in the winter. I can, if I'm in a, a sunny area in the summer, leave it for two weeks. Yeah. But I wouldn't allow someone to live on the boat that didn't understand the boat. Yes. Because it has anomalies. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they all do, don't they? Don't and, they? And it's what you, you've learned. You've been on there over, over a year. We're, we're just learning. Yeah. And, and, we're, and, and it, we're getting there, and it is good. Um, I'm enjoying it now. It was the first couple of weeks were a bit stressful. Why um, was that? Just the amount of stuff we had. I mean, we downsized a year ago. Yeah. And then we moved onto the boat, say, end of January, and we had a van full of stuff, and I wasn't sure it was all going to fit. But we did a couple of charity shop runs to rugby. Um, just to get rid of a few bits and pieces. Yeah. You know, we didn't need crystal wine glasses on our boat, really. Um, but we stuff we had when we packed the house a year ago. So we did a bit of that. But now we've got there's there's little cubby holes everywhere. There's stuff under yeah. the dinette, around the back here. Yeah. There's, there's stuff everywhere, and we found homes for most of it now. Um, and we've probably got too many clothes. Oh, I have. But 
you know, we, we don't, we, don't, we haven't used many of them, but. No, I haven't either. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Just, you know, we've, we've got a washing machine, so we can, we can use, we've got a washer dryer, which is recommended. Um, it uses quite a bit of water, but. And, and yeah. re I've really monitored, mm. like a proper sado, um, of how I watch my water thing go down. And right. it, do you know, I've used a lot, it's about 50 litres of wash. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And you've got the same water capacity as me, although yes. you do have your um, your freedom water thing. Yeah, yeah. But we did, you know, we did it when we knew we would come up to a water point a yeah. couple of days' time. So yeah, just yeah. plan how you do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're going to go into a marina occasionally if we go off to sort of go off and see family. So we'll we'll do some washing there when we can. Um, so yeah, but that's but that's you know that's that's where we are. I'm 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 sort of okay with it. You know, it's been it's been a few snags the, the guys saw now, but generally love the boat. Great stuff. You know, we've we met some nice people. Um, it's 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 a it's a bad time of year. Wet it's February in wet it's February ever. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been and the dreadful. towpath from the north and south Oxford isn't the best. But well, hey, no, north, north's closed anyway, isn't it? Because yeah, well we didn't. Yeah, we weren't gonna, we were going to go Coventry Way and we can't. Yeah. Um, so we we're going down to Banbury direction and we turn around. Um, hang around here for a bit how do you find the south oxford um because for me I'm, you're 62 foot yeah i'm only four foot difference i thought some of those wiggly turns were a little tight but they up they were i mean i've we've done some higher boating before we've done the south oxford and we knew it was very windy and we quite like that because there's less locks um but a higher boat and doing your own boat which is six weeks old is a bit different oh yeah and i i did We've got a bow thrust and I used it on one of the corners, I had to. Oh yeah. Um, I, I quite like it. I quite like the sort of... The, 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 um, I wouldn't like to meet another boat though. No, and that's always the worry um, about meeting another boat. And I have got, I'm part of the beta system, you can have an optional camera put in on it. Because I've got a screen on the back and the stern, it shows you the, what the battery's doing and what the motor's doing, etc. I mean, just, we've got, we paid to get a camera, so I've got a camera on the front and that you just put up that you can just see what's coming so it just it gives you a little bit of a warning yeah, does, at, yeah, at some yeah. of those tight corners but yeah. you just got to go slowly yeah and, and we're okay at the moment but if people are coming thrashing the other way we'll we'll have to react and it'll be a little bit you know I, <laughs> i've got bow thrusters and stick in reverse it's quite a powerful motor um but yeah I, I quite like the contour canals um we've done the oxford and in the past where you've been on the grand union quite a lot yeah uh, until now yes and I love the Grand Union for the simple reason now is it's got life. Yeah. I don't. I think mooring up here is so much easier. I think the the canals are deeper up here, mm. so it's easier okay. to moor. But there's life down there, yeah. and there's fuel boats, and there's there's mm. people that, that I just I love it. <laughs> and um, but you know it was time for me to visit other places and do other stuff, um, and I'm travelling with Colin down to the. Uh, down to the K and A. I know some people on the K and A anyway, so mm. you know I'm kind of looking forward to it. But it is. Whereas that that trip from Bronston to London, I know all the great morning spots. Yeah. yeah. I know where all the sun goes. Yeah. I know which direction the sun goes. Mm. And that hundred miles, I know it intimately. Mm. Just spent over a year, didn't you? Yeah. 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 But to know that amount of canal intimately, mm. is, I think is still quite a tall order, yeah. and that. But part of that is getting off the boat and doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is new. Yeah. So along with that comes the anxiety of where do you moor? Mm. Where's the Wi-Fi? Where's the phone reception? Yeah. Where's the nearest shops? Um, and all that stuff, all that, um, if you like, wrecking I used to do that I didn't. I have to mm. do on my, you know, my latter nine months. Um, I now need to do again, so mm. it's quite exciting. But at the same time, I've met you, I've met some other subscribers, um, and it's been, it's been quite nice. Mm. There was always that thing. I'll oh, be moored here. Is it better around the corner? Yes. There's always going to be that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And we did actually more just further up when we came to um, Fenny Compton. We moored just further around, and we checked, we checked the Wi-Fi, and everything was fine. Um, I mean, we moved, we just, well, I had a quick wander down and thought it was a little bit nicer further down, so we moved a little bit further down. We're by some industrial units, it's quite quiet. Yeah, yeah. We're right by the pub. Yeah. Um, this, this stretch is full now, it's quite nice. Um, it's chocker, it's just, isn't it? It's just a muddy towpath. Oh. Um, it's surprising how it was, when we arrived, it was okay, and a couple of days of rain, it's horrible again. Yeah. But 
But do you know what? That I do the same thing. I stop short, mm. and then I go forward and recce. Yeah. Is there a better spot? Anxiety was one of the things I was worried about, and actually we slept quite well. We 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 were okay. It's we we're, we're getting settled into this life, and it's nice. Um, and I, it can only get better as springs come in and the summer. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so have you got any other anxieties? It, it the, the sort of the tope, the noises, you know, the, the things you hear in the night, the tope of noises. You, you know, you hear stories about people jumping on boats and doing stuff. I think it's it's very rare. Um, that's one of my anxieties. You know, we sort of we got decent locks on the on the thing. We got portholes. You know, it, the boat's very secure. Oik's getting on the boat, one thing. Water isn't an anxiety now. We've got a pump out toilet. It's got a few niggles with that, we're trying to sort out. That's one anxiety, but we'll get that resolved. Um, no, I, I, you know, it's, I think the, the thing you talk about having a shop and, and where you're going to get food and stuff, that, that's one of the things you need to think about. Yeah. Um, it's a planning assumption, isn't yeah. it? But then, the, the, you know, there's a lot of towns on the route and there's places you can go. And we've got a stock, you know, we've got a freezer, we've got a stock of stuff in the cupboard. so. If we, if we get stuck somewhere, we'll just make do. Oh, I think that's the attitude you need to have. Yeah. You know, you, you just you can't stress about too much because no, and, we're and not going to starve to death. And if I have to get my bike and cycle five miles to go find a shop, well, that's what I'll do. But I do that anyway. Yeah, because it's free fizz. Yeah. Um, but the, I, I I like the fact that you know when you're in rural England as we are now. I guess there's a shop down the road. Yeah. Not a lot in it, no. but um, so you can get your basics there. But it's like old Mother Hubbard. Well, if you are in rural England, you have to use what's in the cupboard, and, yeah. and the things that you're yeah. putting. Oh, I'll leave that till later. Leave yeah. that till later. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now, now you're off. Oh. So uh, I've got some bacon grill. Mm. Tin, bacon like in a tin. Yes. That's quite nice. Bacon in a tin. I know. <laughs> Try but, that for breakfast. Yeah, nice. I think <laughs> get it. And I used. We used to have bacon grill as compote in, in the mob. Yeah. Um, it was lovely. Mm. And you used to put it in a, you know, you you mess tin of hot water, boil mm. it up, mm. boil that up, then use the mess tin water for for tea, all that sort of, yeah, bacon grill. Mm. But I leave it to that last minute of thinking, okay, bacon grill time. Mm. We're getting to the end of yeah. the end of what's nice in my cupboard. <laughs> but we we had two little steak kidney puddings. I love the old steak kidney yes, puddings. Yes, yeah. We'd keep them in the cupboard. Yeah. The other day we thought. Quite fancy them, yeah. And they're meant to be reserved rations because they last forever, but we've eaten them already, so we'll buy some more next time. Oh, I, I, but, I don't, yeah. yeah, the yeah. baby's heads, as, as yeah. we used to call them, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> so, and it's also um, the other thing I, I really got into is making my own soup, and I, I know you do, yeah, we do the same, time. yeah, love it. You've got some faith, we got, we got a thermal cooker, yeah, and because we're electric, you spend a quarter an hour getting it boiling and on and sticking the thermal cooker for eight hours. We've got we've got um, a casserole which can go on the diesel stove as well. I think I did a curry one night and just put that on the stove as, as the stove was on in the evening. So I you know I like cooking. I do like cooking and I know it's I've made a cake, um, made some bread. Good man. So you know and that's what that was what it was all about. I mean people could see a ukulele sitting next to you. That was a present to me a year ago. I haven't got a clue how to play it, but I will get to that. <laughs> um, it's just something to keep me. You know, I've been reading already. I've been reading quite a lot already. We've done the charity shops, get some books, take them back. You know, do the swap. That's. And do you know what? This YouTube stuff yeah. stops me doing that. Mm. I haven't. I used to read fifteen minutes of useful articles every day. Yeah. That was one of the things I learned when I was ten, fifteen years ago. Um, and I've stopped doing it because I'm just too busy either trying to find content or mm. editing or you know taking photos or building a website and thank you Lorraine you're welcome <laughs> uh, Lorraine's um, helped me out massively with the website and, and giving me some feedback um, so it was too masculine <laughs> and, and do you know what she's right so I've changed it slightly and it's less masculine now um, so the boating community, I think, are very willing to help each other out, mm. and I think that's marvellous. I, I found that, and yeah, you know, you walk along and have a chat. Yeah, we've got a little puppy who's you've heard earlier. He's all right at the moment. He's asleep on the floor. Um, Someone next door with some dogs. It's it's a nice it's a nice atmosphere. It's a nice place, and people are friendly. Yeah, and, and I I knew that I thought it'd be like that, but I wasn't sure. And it's quite but it's quite nice. We've got there's probably a dozen or two boats here now. Um, 
but last week we were out in the middle of nowhere for a couple of nights with absolutely no one. Yeah. Um, and it, it's nice. So which do you prefer? I think in, in the right situation I like being out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I think if, if it's if it's a nice moor in the towpath you can walk without getting a load of mud and filth in your new, brand new boat. Um, I prefer being out in the middle of nowhere. You know, you, you can hear the birds, you can see, the, you know, the scenery is lovely. Um, and we, we, we were down the other side of Napton, it was really nice. But you do need... You need to be somewhere where you can find the shop, the pub, you know, things like that. And towpath. Towpath, yeah. Otherwise, it's proper <laughs> monkey, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this this is the worst I've ever been. Is it? Yeah, ever. Yeah, we were north of Rugby and it was quite bad as well. So, clearly the Oxford, yeah. whether it's north or south, yeah. it's dreadful, not being looked after. Yeah. Towpaths collapsed everywhere. But we were talking yesterday, and it's quite interesting because... Chris did his bit last week about the muddy towpaths, and I was having a look as you're coming down towards here. Um, you can see the hedges are very wide, and they used to be now. I think they used to be narrower, and then you can see sort of field side. They're, they're layered and they look quite robust and strong and dense. But I think what's happened? They've all moved out onto the towpath, and they've taken up towpath. So now you've got a narrow little strip right next to the canal, and then you've got the little dog vaults where they go in and jump in and out, and, and that's what it's now like. Yeah. So somehow we need to try and recover that bit of well, that, that bush and get that back so you've got a wider towpath. And I would argue, because I don't disagree with you, I would argue that that growth is 10 years worth. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. Um, so what, what? who's been in charge for the last 10 <coughs> years? Discuss. <coughs> I and mean, they don't come back particularly well either. Yeah. And, and because it's all hawthorn bushes. Yeah. So, you know, you want to walk your dog yeah. on a whole load of hawthorns. No, not really. I wouldn't want to cycle. There's no cycle. Definitely, which, cycle. Is, which is <laughs> no, a bonus. No, no, no. <laughs> no. But a lot of the guys, there's some, there's some people who are long term mornings and they've got wheelbarrows, so they must be getting punches. Yeah. Because they're, cut, they're cutting the prickles and they're, all lay, they're just laying on the, on the sofa. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I take the dog, for, he's on a long lead, so I take him on a long lead. And I'm constantly having to stop and try and untangle prickly branches off, off the yeah. lead. But I mean, it's a small thing. We're not moaning about small things, really. It, it's, but it's, it's, it's an inconvenience, yeah. but. Sometimes I, I'm a bit more accepting of some stuff because I can understand the challenges. But you know, like the big, like we were going to go from rugby to Coventry, but the, there's a big cut yeah, yeah, yeah. collapse, and that's going to take a huge amount of resource. And they need they need to sort it out. But again, people are saying that's from years and years of neglect. So you know, discuss that. Should they have done uh, again, more in the past? I, d I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm keeping my powder dry mm. on my thoughts on that because mm. I just don't know. Yeah. Um, but favourite parts of being on the boat. I just, do you know what, I, I, I love, we were in a marina for two, three weeks, and it was all right, but I just love going out and just going out for little trips. Just to, just to, we're not gonna go long, we're, you know, we're not gonna go for eight hour cruises, but five hours, when the weather's sort of nice, the sun's slightly out, that's lovely. Just meandering through the, through the canal. It is really nice. Um, it's homely now, the boat, it's how we want it. It's lovely sitting watching telly in the evening, if we can get a signal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I've got books, so you know it's not too bad. Um, and you've got each other. Yes, and that's you know we talked about it before. I, I, you know, I, you know, you, you had lonely, lonely times, and, and I, I don't know whether I'd have done it as a single person. I think you know it's something we've always wanted to do. We've always enjoyed doing it. So we're living the dream, really, because it's what we wanted to do. Great. We finished. I've stopped, we both stopped work early, um, and this is what we're doing for a few years. Fantastic. Uh, and and there's no other plan after this. No plan B. No plan B, we'd crack on. And if we don't like it at some point, we might, we might we'll do something different. But at the moment, I can't see that. Do you know, I, I met a lady coming up here, I just napped on the hill, um, older lady, 80. I said, well, how old are you? And she got 80. On a boat? On a boat. Mm. 80, on a boat. Okay, she's not on her own. I don't know whether it was it, who it was with her. Um, some considerable years younger, so it might be her son or something or other. Um, but she's still handling those locks. Mm. So I said to her, how do you handle the bigger locks in? She goes, I can't do it now. Mm. So her, her line is, she's now 80, can't manage the big locks. Yeah. So GU's out. Yeah. But there's plenty of other, do you know what I think? Good on you, girl. Yeah. I'd like to, you know, we always thought, but maybe one day we'll stick it in the marina. But yeah. I'm not convinced I'll spend a few weeks there. Maybe, you know, we've seen- As you get older, perhaps. Yeah, but a line side more of a little plot of land. We've passed a few, yeah. People have got a little shed and a little caravan, you know. Yeah. So, no. But, you know, it's how early days. Do, how do you get those? 
think the difficulty isn't it yeah I, I've, I've spoke to someone at uh, Slapton Locks and I said to him how did you get this mate he goes, just by chance right yeah. time right place yeah. I think that's what it, I, I, there's a couple of YouTubers who, who, who took one up in the knees in Liverpool and they've put it away now but they spent a bit of time doing that I think you're right it's just, it just happens to be if some, something's coming available at, at a time when you're looking yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and, and maybe old father fate mm. you know um, the fairy godmother of of decision making will help you along the way you know yeah. if you need something then maybe something will crop up yeah. you talked about anxiety and i think one of my other anxieties was about family and you know elderly parents and, and things like that but we're quite lucky we're sort of staying in the central part of the country at the moment i've got i've got family up north family in south so we will at, in time do a bit of traveling and we'll go up on the Leeds in liverpool and we'll go down to the thames and do what you're doing with Kenny and Avon and stuff um but you know when parents get ill what do you do but it's, it's a lifestyle we've chosen and we've accepted the fact we may not be we can't just jump on a, in a car and go down to somewhere but that's it's a life we've chosen so there's more positives though in more positives in what we're doing and enjoying life and relax boat time just taking it easy then you know and those stressful times will come and we'll deal with them i was watching some some geezer doing measuring out life and he had a hundred meter tape measure 100, 100 centimetres and he said um, I my family and you know my my demographic of person um, lived to about 75 76 okay so he said well let's quite let's take out 25 of those centimetres I'm now 58 so let's take out 58 mm. of those centimetres this is what I've got left mm. that mm. bit of room mm. If I don't enjoy my life in that space, yes, I might live longer, mm. but arguably the, the, the curveball of health could catch you quicker. Yeah. So it's important, I think, from, from mid 50s onwards um, to live the best life, mm. maximize your opportunities, maximize mm. life, to call on a phrase, yeah. um, because it's important. Yeah. And I, th that suddenly hit me. I'm kind of glad in some respects that I'm doing what I'm doing because while I don't think this is my vehicle for life mm. as perhaps it is for Lloyd um, and, and you and Lorraine, mm. I think this for me is a vehicle which is a chapter. Yeah. And if there is no further chapter, I just have to accept this yes. is what I've got. Yeah. And it's not a bad life. Yeah. I want to live it with someone else. Yeah. Because I think I'm still. There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Mm. I don't mind being alone. Yeah. And conversations like this, you know, having interaction with you and Lorraine, um, interaction with Colin, it absolutely has has improved my mm. mental health, my mental well-being. Mm. Um, but I still go home alone. Yes. And sometimes it's that little bit of space that, that for now is being absorbed by other great yeah, folk. Yeah, yeah. But to do this on my own for the rest of my life, I'm not sure I could. No. Yeah. And that's a personal perspective, yes. that's yeah. a personal Well thing. I said to you, I think I, I I wouldn't have I wouldn't want to do it on my own. Um you know one one day one of us might be but then we you do with that. But at the moment yeah. you know we're enjoying Absolutely we, we've retired early, we're able to do it and we do it as long as we can. Yeah. and as long as we feel we want to do it and then we'll do whatever comes I mean you're a bit of a slim Jim I've lost a, an awful lot of weight being on the boat mm. so I do think it's um, it's a good um, if you like diet yes I mean <laughs> you're right it is I mean although I, I like making cakes and stuff yeah, so you've got, you've got to be a bit careful yeah yeah but, you know once the weather gets better we'll go out for a lot you know the dogs are only you know, only small so we can't take them for long walks but you know I've got a big backpack I've got a little tent I tend to put that in the, put that and crack off for an overnighter and oh good do man stuff do some like more that. camping yeah. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. I got, you know, I've got a friend. I've got a friend who does quite a bit of that down the south coast, and I've done a bit with him in the past. A group of friends, absolutely. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, you know, um, or even just a campsite. You know, I just just get away with the dog when he's older. Um, definitely do that. You know, we'll, we'll we'll enjoy the bikes once the weather's a bit better, and we've got a decent tow path that we can cycle on. Um, so you're right. It is that. It's that whole the outside. It's just nice being out there. And even, oh. even when the weather's can be a bit rubbish. Oh, there's a lot worse places you could be. Well, 
Russia, yeah, Ukraine, absolutely, yeah. Israel, yeah. Palestine, yeah. Syria, we're mainly bad, Yemen. We're, we're mainly bad being on the toe for oh, no, no, it's no. Not, <laughs> and some prickly bushes. Yeah, it's, no, not, no. It's, not, it's not a big thing in the, in the, in the big schemes, is it? No. 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 And, no. The, and the positive is so much better. I'm so much more relaxed than I used to be. Um, Say a few anxieties, but we'll, we're getting there. And, and yeah, we're in a good place at the moment. So the bloom life, so. as I like to call it now, mm. is making a difference in, in your life yeah. and both of your lives. Yes, definitely. Well, may I continue? Absolutely, yeah. 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 Great stuff, yeah. yeah. Anything you want to share and discuss? <sighs> well, I, I'm happy with it, I love it. I love the bow, you know, we, we're comfortable here. The traveling, as you say, a few few miles here or there, stay yeah, put yeah, for a few yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. You just do what you want to do. Yeah. And if you don't want to go, don't go. Stay put as long as you're not on the moor, which you've got to be clear from. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, it's just it's it's what we thought. It's it's better than I thought it would be. Um. But it's it's smaller than I thought it would be. <laughs> but you become spatially yeah, aware, don't you? And and we're we're fine now. And we we've got a, a sofa bed as well, and a dinette and a, and a bed. Um. So, you know, future grandchildren can come and stay, and that was part of the plan. Um, we look forward to that at some point. Um, but it is, it's a small boat. It's not a 62 feet, but it's... It's still a small it's space. A small boat. You know, we started looking at 57 foot, because we can go anywhere. I want a little sort of workshop at the end, a little desky study area. We've got that in, but we, we struggle a bit, so now it's now 62 foot. Yeah. And we can go in most places, um, and we will do. Oh, and well, that's great. You know, I... I the, the times, my decision point, my DP was, how often am I going to go onto the Leeds and Liverpool or some or the Huddersfield mm. <coughs> in my 57 foot boat? Yeah. Or would I rather live a little bit more comfortably yeah. in a 66 foot boat? And still do 75% of the canals. There we go. So, so yeah, I mean, yeah, happy days at the moment. Great days. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've, got a little, we've got a little Instagram page, so I'm sure I'll put something on there at some point when we're doing it, so, yeah. Um, so, what's your Instagram? Round to it. I'll link it below. Yeah. And um, where are you heading now? We're heading down. We're so going we're to Capri D for a week. We're shooting off down to Surrey to see family. And then we're going to head north again, hang around the Midlands to a creek. Um, people have asked me, if you had your boat built again, mm. what would you change? Mm. It's probably early days yet. No. The dinette's a bit of a... I mean, it fits, but it fits just about. It's, it's tight, and when you put the air behind it, and you struggle to pull it out. So, <laughs> another couple of feet on the boat would have been useful, I think, actually. But I, I think, no, do you mean, I don't know. We've gone pump out toilet. I'm, I'm happy with that decision. You're not? I am happy with oh, that. Oh, you are? I, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. have changed that. Okay. Um, we've got the water freedom. I'm happy with that. We've got the, the diesel reflex. Happy with that. Battery wise, would I have gone lithium? But then again, when these are gone, maybe I do. Maybe battery technology moved on in 10 years and I can get some lithium in there and more space. But I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Um, not, no, not really, not really. It suits, it suits what we wanted and we've got a TV cabinet, drop down TV in it, maybe that's a bit excessive. Have a telly on top and a bit more cupboard space, maybe. Um, Minor things, aren't it? Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing major about it. You know, we don't. We love it. We have. We've got a. We've got a um, crash cover at the moment. Not too sure about a pram hood. I know you. You. You swear by. Swear it. by them. Maybe in, in a year or two. Once we've. You know. Once we've got used to it. Right. It, it does what it, it does. What we need to do. I like the look of it. We chose the colours. We've got some nice sign writing on it. Um, those little touches. We've got them. Um, We've got some glass doors to, to the toilet, um, sort of stained glass, which are really nice. Those little extra bits. Portholes, definitely. Double glazing, we've gone for. Thermally broken frames, people started offering those, but I don't think so. The, the condensation is going to go somewhere, isn't it? So, best you can see it, I think. Um, no, we, we're really happy with it. But we say we, we've only been six weeks. But nothing, nothing really, I'd think, oh, that's just wrong. <sighs> Has it dispersed your thoughts? Has it, have you added to the thoughts or do you agree, disagree? Comment below as you always do. And um, until next week, I don't know what I'm doing next week, but this is, this is coming out. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing. Those of you that have still subscribed and are subscribing. And I'll uh, um, see you on Wednesday. Ciao, Papa.